doctors don't know nutrition. I wasn't taught nutrition in medical school or residency. Your doctor probably wasn't taught nutrition in medical school or residency. And I think this is a huge part of the problem. So in this video, I went to the University of Arizona where I went to medical school and I talked to medical students. <laughs> we eventually got kicked out because we weren't supposed to do this, but I actually was able to have a conversation with some medical students about what they were being taught in nutrition, what they thought about red meat, what they thought about polyunsaturated fat, seed oils, saturated fat, and the results were enlightening. I tried to mess with them a little bit. I tried to teach them a little bit, but I think when you see what these medical students say about nutrition and what they're being taught and their understanding, you'll understand why your doctor doesn't get it probably. <laughs> so I hope this video will be enlightening to you. It was fun to talk to these medical students who agreed to be filmed and share these ideas with you guys, but I was a little disappointed in what they knew and what they didn't know. And like I said, I think this is a real indication of major problems with the way that we're teaching our medical students in the medical system today. And I think this has to change if people are gonna get healthy. What do you, what's interesting for you about cardiology? Like what disease is most interesting for you cardiology? Is it like so, arrhythmias? Is it, is it atherosclerosis? So me, I'm digging here. Like heart failure? Heart failure? Yeah, because like the community I'm from, like a lot of heart problems. And so like, you know, that's where I kind of got my motivation. Uh huh. So heart failures, hypertension is another one. Okay, let's talk about hypertension. Yeah. What do you guys think causes hypertension? Um, Anybody uh, can answer. The cardiologist, the neurologist, the radiologist, the general surgeon over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say just the environment, right? Like our diet, you mentioned nutrition earlier. Like diet could cause hypertension. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, also stress levels too, right? Yeah. Like, I know my, my dad has it, and like, I know that's like more prevalent in like African-American communities, right? Is your dad healthy or is he a little overweight? He's a little bit on the overweight side. Is he stressed or does he have like, is he like Zen? He's stressed. Yeah? Yeah, cause he's like type of work that he does is like, he's a businessman, so mm -hmm. to that. Right? But he has hypertension. Yeah. Okay. And so that's where I kind of learned a lot about hypertension and medications that he, he takes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. What, what do you think about diet? Like any ideas about what type of dietary stuff might cause high blood pressure? Yeah, like salt high intake, sodium. high sodium, um, fatty foods. Uh, what kind of fatty foods? Are we talking about like a, a ribeye, kind of like a ribeye steak? Or are we talking about French fries? Or are we talking about other fatty foods? I would say <clears throat> fast food. Yeah, fast food, French fast fries, food, dipped yeah. in oil, anything, fried. Like, anything fried, yeah. Fast food, French fries. Yeah. Fried food in general. What is that cooked in? Huh? What is what are those cooked in? Oils. Oils. Canola, oil. Canola oil, maybe, right? Yeah. Uh, there's different types of oils. Olive oil would be good though. Olive oil might be better. Yeah, it would be better. Um, Not good. Better. <laughs> better, yeah. So yeah, so that's what I'm so yeah, diet, stress, um, the two most important ones. What about red meat? You think like a hamburger causes hypertension? Oh, yeah. What about a steak? Red meat, yeah. Oh, yeah. Red meat would be bad. A lot of nods over here. Red meat's bad. I don't eat red meat. You don't eat red meat? <laughs> no. Red meat, good or bad? Yeah. Red meat's bad? Yeah. Did they teach you that in med school? They, they'd say it's a, it's a known carcinogen. It's a known yeah. carcinogen. Yeah. yeah? Who says that? Dr. Marvosti. <laughs> Red meat's bad? Delicious, but yes, bad. Red meat's bad? For a long time, yeah. If you what? keep eating it for like every single day, like you just don't think yeah, about it. Give me a little yeah. effect. If you, if you eat like red meat every single day, you think yeah. you'd have like a six pack and be jacked or you think you'd get like... That's yeah. possible, oh, yeah. but... So you, you so could. On how you eat it too. I mean, yeah. whether it's in a burger or if you're gonna cook it in like a steak, that's a little, or like some other healthier version. Yeah. I guess. The What's fat. a healthier version of red meat? Lean meat. Right? Lean meat. Yeah. What if you ate like fatty meat every day? You think you'd, you'd think you'd have like a six pack if you ate fatty meat every day? Yeah, you would see somebody like a cardiologist. <laughs> you think you'd, that somebody would see like a cardiologist if you ate fatty meat every day? Yeah, I would say clogged arteries. Right? Clogged arteries, yeah. not six pack. No. No, somebody's getting obese. If they're eating like fatty red meat every day, yeah, yeah? Yep. man, not a lot of red meat levers here. You like it, but you yeah, think I it's like bad it, for you. Yeah. What about butter? What if somebody ate like lots of butter every day? He's what? Well, tell me, what are you thinking? That's just a uh, recipe for disaster, pun intended. <laughs> butter, butter every day is a re butter every day is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, so like, what that. happens if somebody ate like if took like a, they took like a fatty hamburger and they put like extra butter on it every day? Do you think they would look like six pack? No. More cholesterol in the body. Yeah, yeah. More cholesterol, yeah. more inflammation? Higher chances yes, of yeah. 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 Hypertension, yeah. Hypertension? 
So like, do you guys know how we measure inflammation, like HSCRP? Um, like this sounds familiar. Yeah. Sounds familiar. So you think if somebody ate like butter on red meat every day, their HSCRP might be elevated, yeah. Yeah. might be high. Do you guys know about insulin resistance? Have you learned about insulin resistance at all? Yeah. yeah. What, what is insulin resistance involved in? <clears throat> you guys are great, diabetes. by the way. Yeah, yeah. diabetes, yeah. Diabetes. Do you know how we check insulin resistance? Like, uh, you've heard of a fasting insulin? Well, blood sugar, yeah. yeah. Fasting insulin? Yeah, that's important. Yeah? Um, so if you have diabetes, your fasting um, glucose levels is going to be elevated. Yep, fasting glucose is going to be elevated if you have, yep, I mean your fasting insulin is going to be elevated too. Yeah. So if somebody's eating like ribeye steaks and butter or hamburgers every day, like maybe two meals a day, you think their fasting insulin is going to be elevated? Yeah, so from my knowledge... Like, you know, do you think they'd get diabetic? Yeah. Eventually. Yeah? What do you think, radiologist? Yeah. From your dark room, tell me the answer. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> yeah? What do you think? Yeah? Okay, so what is like a healthy diet? What do you guys think of as a healthy diet? And this can be your impression or what you've been taught. But what if, well you actually, let me start with this guy, because you said some doctor told you red meat was a carcinogen, right? <laughs> Did that doctor tell you what's healthy? Uh, I mean, he was the, so he was a lecturer of the public health lecture. Uh -huh. So like he, um, we mentioned Mediterranean diet. Uh, he talks about having like a healthy balance of Omega fatty acids and uh, vegetables, fruits, grains. Uh, grains? What kind of grains are good? Uh, whole grains? Yeah, whole grains? Like grains, wheat? Yeah. Like, like maybe whole, whole wheat bread? Yeah. Okay. What about like, like rice? I would say... Rice. Rice. Would, yeah. What's that? Rice, wheat, like rice? Like brown rice? rice yeah. quinoa. quinoa is good. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then like lots of vegetables. Vegetables. Like leafy, spinach, leafy green vegetables, kale. kale. So he probably kale. likes kale. Yeah. Family, yeah. Just foods that have color. Avocados. Foods that have color. Not, well, a steak. Like red, a steak like has red color. Red <laughs> like, like just like vegetables. Like, like the more colorful, colorful vegetables. Yeah, colorful vegetables. So what do we think? Kale. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Okay. Lots of thumbs up. Double thumbs up for kale. Lots you know, I'm from, not from California, so no. <laughs> no. <laughs> this guy's not sure. <laughs> One thumb up for kale. Okay. So Mediterranean diet, you said that's, that's healthy. High fiber. High fiber is healthy? Yeah. What does high fiber do that's healthy? Promotes digestion. Yeah. Is that pooping? Yeah, it, removes, it helps digestive yeah, it and achieve, allows yeah. nutrients for the diversity in your gut microbiome. So fiber, you think, increases the gut diversity? Yeah. Yeah? Did they show you a study that shows that? I listened to a podcast. You listened to a podcast? Yeah. This is actually a good question for you guys. Do you guys know the difference between like epidemiology and interventional studies? like observational versus interventional studies. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know the difference? Right, epidemiology is looking at just like what is the prevalence and incidence of a disease versus right. interventional is doing something to help reduce the yeah. incidence and prevalence of that, right? Well, like an intervention? Or like, yeah, right. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Would you guys add, would you add anything to that? No, I think you got it. You got it. Epidemiology is like observational. Yeah. When you're looking at an epidemiology study, do you have to be careful? Are there any problems with epidemiology you have to be careful of? I'm clearly leading you on here. Well, whether, whether uh, how like underdiagnosed or misdiagnosed the disease is, maybe. Right. What about like bias? Have you guys, yeah. you guys heard of bias? Uh, yeah. Ethnicities, race, all of that. Like there might not be enough research done in a certain area, mm -hmm. which is dominated by a certain race. So yeah, that can be a bias. That or like can researcher itself. bias too. Yeah. Like, right. Here, have you guys heard of healthy user bias? Healthy, healthy user bias? Healthy. No. Yeah, Unhealthy user bias. So check this out. There's studies done in the United States that, and you guys probably learned this, this is probably, you tell me if this is you think why your professors tell you red meat is bad. A lot of studies done in the United States that, that associate, they're epidemiology, right? They're observational studies. These studies associate the consumption of meat with bad health outcomes. So what do you think, can you do any, can you draw a causative inference from that? Like how much, how much weight should that kind of a finding carry in medicine? You guys understand what I'm asking? Am I asking it clearly? Like, how much should the... How much should you guys, as future doctors, rely... Yeah, rely on that kind of research to make a connection between red meat and disease? I guess it would have to depend on where the research is coming from, whether it's a primary article or what, like, has been done. Like, again, if it was an interventional versus epidemiology. Well, this is epidemiology that yeah. I'm talking. So let's say it's epidemiology. Say it's observational epidemiology. What do you think? Mm. We've also learned about like a lot of research biases that can like in 
that can include different statistics to make it look more pretty, like relative risk versus absolute risk. Um, so I guess, I mean, based off an epidemiological study, I guess you would have to need, you would need more information to really confirm whether there's a correlation. What kind of, a correlation or a causation? Uh, I would say correlation. What correlation does not <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah, so. He's got that. When they tell you red meat is bad for you, what kind of studies are they using to back that up? Um, What'd you say? That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting because, like, I, there's different types of red meat, right? You got, like, lean and all that. So, like, I guess I'm not really sure what type of research that they're using for those. I would have to kind of look into it and kind of compare the different research results. And, yeah. So the one study the, I, the yeah. Studies, right? Yeah. The only study that, I, uh, or I guess like when I was like going through giving up me and like the thought of doing that, yeah. um, I had seen like just some studies that showed people, and this is particular to, penis. <clears throat> so like this is particular to like the health of your penis. Uh -huh. And so for... That's People, important. Yeah, I mean, that's important. I mean, it's significant to us. So, I mean, it was uh, obviously important to me. But like, uh, people that uh, teenagers, they pulled athletes from different high schools and they gave them uh, a few different dishes. The ones that had uh, dishes with either red meat or chicken or some kind of poultry, like turkey. Uh, in the night, they had less frequent uh, erections and less hard erections um, than the people that had a dish without any uh, meat or plant-based dish. This was an interventional study. Yeah. This was an interventional study. And was this in that, that, that documentary Game Changers? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. How, big was that how big was that study? How many people were in it? There was like six, 15, I don't know, something like that. Like, it wasn't a very big population. So. Did they do any crossovers or anything like that to control for different types of interventions. Because, you know, so if you give somebody, you know, a veggie burrito first and then a, a meat burrito second or a right. meat burrito second, a meat burrito first and a and veggie burrito, burrito second, did they do any crossovers in that study to control for any of that stuff? Not that I saw, no. No, I don't think there were. How, how high quality do you think that study was? I don't know how to, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but you based a lot of your decisions on that. Well, I mean, I had just been wanting to give up meat before that, but... Why? Just because of like health reasons, so. What kind of, so this is cool. <laughs> I want to know this. So what kind of health reasons were prompting you to want to give up meat before that? Uh, so my, I have a family history of hypertension, so just wanted to decrease my chances risk. of ha my risk of having hypertension. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So What kind of studies show that meat is related to hypertension? I'm sure if I go out and look for something, I might <laughs> find something, but now off the top of my head, I don't know. Do you think they'd be interventional or observational? I imagine there would be both. You think there's interventional studies out there? I would hope so yeah i would think there is you i mean there's a lot, sure there's a lot are of, you? i'm gonna say about 60 to 70 percent i'm gonna but, give you uh, i'm gonna give you over under odds all right you got a phone you got they got wi-fi here i think so yeah i will give you a hundred dollars right now a hundred bucks if you can find a single interventional study that shows that meat causes hypertension he's on the truck he's on the case i have to do it right now on pubmed do you guys think he's gonna be able to find one there's research coming out every year, so yeah, I, would not, I would not be surprised. He thinks he might get $100. I don't know. What do you think? Surprised? Maybe. It's possible. If he, doesn't, if he doesn't find one, does he have to give me $100? No, I won't make him oh, do that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I agree to that? <laughs> <laughs> I never said it. What do you think? You think he's going to be able to find one? I don't know. The way that you're asking it, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like a question. Yeah. <laughs> I could increase the money a little bit, too. Make it more interesting. All right, so... He wanted to eat to get rid of meat. Do you eat meat? I eat sometimes, yeah. What kind of meat do you eat? All types of meat. All types? Yeah. Red meat? Yeah. But it's bad for you. Moderation. <laughs> Moder Moder every day of moderation. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> so there's something about the, the amount? The amount that you eat. Uh, for me, so I used to eat a lot of red meat because like, that's just how culturally we do it, right? Huh? And then I realized like later on, this probably not after, you know, going to school and like kind of doing my own research, I was like, you know what, this might not be a good idea. Even like with chicken, like I try to eat that in moderation and just get the amount that I need as far as, you know, meal preps go or the amount of protein that I need to hit for that day. Uh -huh. So you did some research and that kind of swayed you with regard to meat too. 
yeah so white meat from what i've seen uh, this was a long time ago but white meat from what i've seen uh, research was saying that's better to, for you to eat compared to red meat is this interventional or observational i think for i didn't really look at interventional this was more observational <clears throat> and more observational. also word of mouth too other word of mouth saying that yeah around me but you're gonna be a doctor I know this was before though. This was a long time ago, right? But it still influenced you. Yeah, it still influenced me. Um, and so now I'm like in that midst of changing my, my, my habits and trying to do more research, more greens. Uh, more greens? Yeah, more vegetables. Um, What's that based on? Uh, as far as uh, vegetables go? Yeah, yeah. Oh, just like some of the nutrients that you can get. I know, um, for example, broccoli, you get more iron. So like, you know, I know um, multivitamins that you can take, right? Uh -huh. I thought now my thinking is like to think Instead of just taking pills and getting my vitamins that way, uh -huh. I can try to do research to see what foods correlate with those vitamins. That's a great idea. And then kind of take it that That's way. That's a great idea. Yeah. So you're getting your broccoli to get iron. Yeah. How bioavailable is the iron in that broccoli? Yeah, I'm not too sure. <laughs> He's not too sure. <laughs> not too sure. How bioavailable is the iron in a steak? I know there's a lot of iron in steak. So why wouldn't you eat a steak to get your iron? I mean, I never said I wouldn't, right? Oh, oh so moderation. <laughs> moderation. But how much is too much? That's a how good How do you question. know? That's a good question. Um, so the way I base it off is like just, I try to, so if I'm a 220 pound male, right? Uh -huh. um, they you can look they say one gram. I'll give you a hundred bucks if you find one too. You guys both get a hundred bucks. <laughs> they say one gram per um, body weight, right? So one gram per pound of body weight for protein. For, meat? for protein. protein, not me. Yeah, for me. Yeah, protein. Well, that's right? okay. That's a good amount of protein. Right, and so you can get your protein from meat. You can get it from beans as well. From like beans. Just kind of mix it up. What about know? the what about the bioavailability of the protein from beans? Is that good protein? Do you get a, do you get a lot of that those amino acids out of the beans? Is it the same as meat or is it different? I'm not too sure, but I do know beans also are high in fiber. So beans are high in fiber. It's a double whammy They're for They're the me. musical fruit, oh. right? Yeah. You know about that? No. You don't know about beans as the musical fruit? No. They make you toot, dude. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's what me. That's what me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fiber, yeah. You thought I was set. You thought I was being serious. <laughs> so how much red meat do you eat in a day? Uh, it, it, it's different for me. One gram of protein per pound of body that's weight? yeah so that's what i'm aiming for uh -huh. but like every day because of school and stuff like that i don't hit that at all and I'll how much do you weigh 220 so you'd have to get 220 grams of protein a day yeah that's the recommendation from beans not from beans oh uh, from, from meat a mixture of proteins yeah oh it could be uh meat whether it's fish chicken mm -hmm. uh red meat uh -huh. or beans as well right so but i thought that those were bad for you the red, red meat. meat yeah in moderation, right? But like 220 grams a day, moderate? No, nah, so that would be if I did just 220 pounds of red meat. Uh-huh, 220 grams right. protein from red meat, yeah. Yeah, so for my culture, we don't, like, that's how it used to be. We eat, like, red meats for lunch, then then dinner would be, like, chicken. But now, now it's, like, more in moderation, right? Okay. So, like, you just got to balance it out. I'm going to ask you about that in one second. I'm checking so. with these guys over here. Did you get 100 bucks? Oh, I mean, I can do more research, but in these 10 minutes now, I didn't get anything. Did you get a hundred bucks? Uh, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't find so, it either. I'm good. I, 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 I guess my question is, though, is are interventional studies the only ones that provide good legitimate data, or can you get legitimate data from other types of studies? You're going to be the doctor. You tell me. You're the one that is a doctor. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me you went to, I mean, I'm a first year. You graduated eight years ago. So here's, here's what I, here's my question to you. If you're going to, look at a study, you've got to be able to draw a causative inference, right? You've got to be able to say, I did an intervention, I controlled it, there was a control group, it was preferably blinded, right? To draw a causative inference, right? Okay. Can you draw a causative inference from epidemiology, from observational studies? <clears throat> so these are studies that are, that are done with like surveys, right? right? Can you draw a causative inference from that? Even if you have a ton of them, say you have a mountain, you have hundreds of thousands of patients being followed, in these studies. Can you draw a causative inference from that? I'm sure you can find some kind of relationship, but I don't know about a causative, but there's definitely relationships that can be shown throughout these different types of studies. You ever seen that website, uh, Spurious Correlations? What if I can show you a really strong relationship between the number of movies Nicolas Cage has appeared in every year and deaths by homicide? Does that mean it's, does that mean there's causative inference, causative relationship there? No, but I think, I mean, obviously, like, I know what you're trying to get at. Uh -huh. I just think that just because the data <clears throat> might not show causative relationships doesn't mean that it's irrelevant data. It doesn't mean it's irrelevant, but what do you do with that data? <clears throat> 
Yeah, so you can have a mountain of epidemiology yep. studies. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you guys figure it out for yourself. Like, I'm a doctor. I have my beliefs, but I'm not going to tell you anything. I just want to ask you questions and get you guys thinking because I hope that in medical school, you guys are challenged to think right. for yourselves. I think a lot of times you got step one, you got step two, you got rotations. When I was in medical school, all I did was focus on the boards and focus on regurgitating things. And I got really good at it. Right. And you can get really good at it. But I was never challenged to do this. And I went to U of A in Tucson. Maybe Phoenix is way better. I hope so. I was never challenged to actually think about the root cause of an illness. The root cause and how you change it. Not with a pharmaceutical, because that right. doesn't really change the root cause. I was never challenged to think for myself and question because I was kind of lost in the sea of observational studies and epidemiology. And you have this guy standing up in front of you and he's like a fucking demigod, right? It's a professor, like whatever he says is true. But what I hope is that you guys will question that. You gotta question your professors along the way when you can. And I think you might find some interesting stuff because I don't wanna keep you guys too much longer, but I think if you look at the research, you're not gonna find a single interventional study that shows red meat causes hypertension. You're not gonna find a single interventional study that shows red meat causes inflammation. You're not gonna find a single interventional study that shows that red meat causes atherosclerosis. You're not gonna find that because they haven't been done or they show the opposite. I can show you guys right now an interventional study with diabetics where they replaced six to 800 grams of carbohydrates, the whole grain carbohydrates that you guys love with red meat and their insulin sensitivity got better. Their inflammation went down. How can that be? Wow, but yeah, that that's actually a good point that you brought up. Like, how can that be? You tell. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> how do you think that can be? <laughs> He's not sure. <laughs> how can that be? Uh, I don't. If you guys like this content, if you find this interesting, if you find this valuable, please like, subscribe, share this with someone that you know who's in medical school, who may be going to medical school, who wants to be a doctor, so they can understand how little nutrition, the root cause of all illness, is actually being taught in medical schools. Share this with people you think may help us change this in medical schools. As you can see, there's a lot more education we need to be doing at medical school level at the foundation of what we're teaching our doctors if we're actually gonna get patients, you, your family, your kids healthy. This is why it's so screwed up, guys. Hopefully this has been revealing to you. See you in the next video.